All right, welcome back to the Remedial Film Class Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. And I'm Travis. And I'm George. And it's not that I don't have an insult for George this week. I'm just rendered speechless that he's never seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a damn shame. Dun, dun, dun. (sighs) Hey, George. Yeah, man. I mean, I should at least ask you. I shouldn't just assume. George, have you ever seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? No, I haven't. (sighs) Man, sometimes you set your expectations low and people meet them. (laughs) (laughs) This is true. Yeah, man, I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it. Um, I think I have a a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. Um, The title says a a lot. Yeah, I, I think I've... I think I've seen, uh, you know, some of the more... Bits and pieces. Yeah, bits and pieces. Some of the more iconic scenes um, here and there just in, I don't know, you know, when you're watching Probably VH1, it's the most, I love uh, the uh, 80s or whatever. Ever? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but I have not seen the movie. Well, sir, you are in for a treat tonight. So... Uh, I'd say, Travis, with no further ado, why don't we shove him into the isolation Freezer? booth? And oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Watch what? out, he'll pop right back out. Spoiler okay. alert. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, let's put George uh, into his isolation chamber of doom and let him watch uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. George. Yes, ma'am. Did you... Uh, <laughs> I said yes, ma'am. <laughs> I was gonna say yes, ma'am. <laughs> did you, uh, did you fare okay through yeah. the the horrors? Oh yeah. Did you leave the lights on? No. Good. No, I watched it in the dark, just like you told me to. Excellent. How many actually, times did you turn it up and down? <laughs> I n- not a lot <laughs> okay. actually. This this new uh, this new sound bar I got is is handling it pretty well. Watching it in the dark helped. Because there's a lot of really dark scenes. Mm. And I think I might have missed some things if there was full light in the room. W- did you watch it on DVD or Blu-ray? I don't know. It was DVD. See, I I just recently got the 4K release from Germany. And so once I uh, adjusted my Sprockens and my <laughs> audio commentaries and such to <laughs> and your to metric work, systems uh, in a language that I can perceive um, mm. I saw stuff I'd never seen before and I bet you missed it because there's just no way at the DVD resolution you would have seen it yeah probably and it's a crying shame but we'll talk about it also sure. uh, I don't have a sound bar in the room I was watching it so I <laughs> switched it to mono mm. just like the olden days man and it was yeah. fine I didn't need the 13.1 that the DVD of 13.1 dudes. I don't even know where all those speakers <laughs> go. Can I just tell you how awesome it was to actually watch this movie this week on a VHS? Ooh. Wow. I mean, you missed a lot. I but don't also care. It just had that feel. Plenty. I saw the grit. I felt the 1974-ish of it. Living I, up to your, uh, to your reputation as Nostalgia Travis. Yeah, it's just... That's the kind of movie that just needs to be watched on VHS. I'm sorry. I have to look, though. But I'm if, curious to see the v, the 4K one. So I have to say, it was pretty gritty, man. Like I, I'm looking here nice. to see if it was 35 or 16, but looking at it, I, it had to be a 16 millimeter. Yeah, yeah, they filmed okay, it at yeah. 16. It was blown up to 35, but yeah, it was filmed at 16. It had to be from the grain. I mean, it looked great, and the detail was great, but it definitely mm-hmm. didn't clean up as well as like a, you know, a Suspiria. So. Right. But that's okay. I'm not complaining. It felt <laughs> grimy the whole time. And I hope that George also felt grimy, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at my two pages of notes and I'm like, do we even ask him what he felt, how he <laughs> liked it or not? Because maybe we should get into our notes and then find out if he liked it or not. Hey, George, it sounds like <laughs> yeah. we don't care if you liked it or not. We're just going <laughs> to ride with us in this van down the highway in East Texas. Speaking yeah. of, as long as you have any Franklin uh, ta- temper tantrums, we'll be all right, dudes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if a guy shows you slaughtered animal pictures like that he had at the ready, 
you just agree with everything that guy says until you are at a safe distance. Mm. Yeah. Can can I tell you that um that the hitchhiker was actually um I I, I want to tell you how much I identified with him. You know, he okay. was like I you saw have myself my attention in in the hitchhiker. Yeah, I'm curious. No, that was that was a joke. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I, like, I was going to talk through the whole thing that you were you know touching on, but I didn't. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I wasn't sure if it involved a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. The um, uh, it, it, you know when they pick up the hitchhiker and I'm like, and that whole scene's going on. I'm thinking, wow, they're getting right into this, aren't they? Like, okay, cool. You didn't feel that way with the uh, the corpses impaled by a, a tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, <laughs> at the yeah. very beginning, <laughs> I, I I felt that way about that too. But but you know, once you know, once we meet the characters and everything, I was like, okay, well, how long is this you know fun little trip gonna last? Not Man, long. The <laughs> film is not cheap. You gotta take every gotta second. Get to it. You gotta get it going. Hey, yeah, no, one hundred forty thousand dollars to spend. <laughs> that was it. I I'm gonna put something out here. Put this in the time capsule, guys. Uh, put my name on it. 2020. This is my prediction. In about 20 years, it's about 2040, there are going to be guys our age, mid-30s, and they're going to be looking back at things like Tinder and Uber. And they're going to be like, how fucking stupid <laughs> were the people in 2020 to be putting their lives at risk, banging strangers, Mm-hmm. And riding in strangers' cars that might be a taxi or might be a murder mobile. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. <laughs> because that's how that's I true. feel every time I see hitchhiking in a movie. I'm just like, y'all yes. were so stupid. And, and he, he fit every he checked off every box. Well, I think the murder mobiles <laughs> wouldn't have a really good rating, you know, on the app. It so. only takes once. <laughs> yeah, I mean you, when you, you don't get a chance to leave the one star on yeah. your way out. Like as <laughs> long as they murder true. you quick, you don't get a chance to rate them. I guess that's true. I felt the same way when I saw the hitchhiker. I'm like, oh man! Like I remember being younger and seeing them and knowing not to pick them up. But if I saw him, th- there's no way I'm picking him up. Like, he looks like he needs help. No, he looks like he just killed four people. He looks like <laughs> man. If you just look past his appearance and see the goodness in people, yeah. you would understand that he's worth. Pi- yeah, it's terrible. Why did people <laughs> hitchhike? <laughs> Y'all were crazy. I mean, I love the 70s, man. The music, yes. Uh, okay, that's about it. Some of the movies, <laughs> but a lot of the music. And then everything else is kind of crappy. But why are you picking up Hitchhikers, you Looney Tunes? <laughs> What's funny is it like that kind of, when you watch it, George excluded, but when you watch it, it's like so cliche now. Like picking up the hitchhiker, you know, he yells, you're all doomed kind of crap. And then, you know, it's the teenagers they are in the car. Like it's, it's become something that's so been used so many times. But this is one of the first times that's been used. So when you're watching, it's like, okay, I know what's going to happen. This guy's already looks batshit crazy. And he's going to go batshit crazy inside that van. But that's because I've seen like a thousand movies. Well, I haven't seen a thousand movies, and I felt the same way. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, that was the, one of my critiques, I guess, if if you know, you can call it that, um, because you know, who am I? I've seen like ten movies, but it was kind of predictable. That okay. was one of the things that that I was kind of like, well, this this really didn't have a twist. It didn't have a hold any, on, you know. It hold was just on. it was just hold predictable. On. Let's put a pin in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> because I really want to know how George could have potentially ever predicted a few of the things he is about to see in this movie. Maybe he just didn't see it because it was DVD and not 4K. But, but dude. Yeah, he didn't predict that dinner time. I don't we're, putting no, a, we're putting no, no, a no, pin no, no. on dinner time because i got to yeah. talk about Grandpa at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, look, before we talk about... Well, we can talk about Grandpa Woman talking about the art and uh, the design, the art direction, and the set design, and all that stuff. The, like, they said over 95% of the things in this movie were real. The, I the believe The bones, it. Oh. the cadavers, the, 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 the skeletons, all the animal byproducts. The armadillos. It's, the armadillo. Well, yeah, it's all cheap and real. Like, they said that by the time they were done filming, that house smelled like 
uh, you know, a like slaughterhouse. It <laughs> like it looked. <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it was like a gradual. You you can predict to a point what it's going to look like, but just the whole set design of of that house it was almost serene. You know, before everything starts happening, like you you know something's going to happen. You hear the generator. There's nobody answering the calls, but it's still a beautiful scene. So you're kind of hoping that... No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, this movie's called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But it wasn't like the house had the bones on the outside and it had, like, they, they definitely drew you into thinking that... Oh, uh, I... I, it just, I... I just... I thought it was serene on purpose, like the outdoor feeling. Once you get in the house, it's a different story. You know, yeah. there's obviously a wall of skulls. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the cow hides hanging on the walls like all that stuff is definitely not to mention shit. you know a guy with a chainsaw is yeah also but even before there, so. you see him like when when uh no i uh, yeah i understand you have to Kirk understand goes in the house for the first time you know what movie, he's saying is like this movie is pre-hoarders guys the country was not ready to see a house you know four inches deep in animal waste or whatever's right. in that kitchen like Modern audiences might be like, "Oh yeah, I saw that on A and E. They just got a bunch of totes and got her some counseling." <laughs> Not the case with this family. <laughs> Gonna need more than totes no. and counseling. Gosh, that part out in the yard. And I don't know if it's just I was paying better attention this time, or I was trying to be more critical. But the sense of dread that I felt, even having seen the movie a half dozen times, when they get to the backyard, they you hear the generator noise. They see the car graveyard and the like canopy covering to keep helicopters from seeing how many their people they've killed. Cars yeah. in the backyard, dude. Whoa. Yeah, that's that's good shit. That's good attention to detail too. Like, uh, I wish they would have shown more of that. I know in a movie today they would show you like the the grand graveyard of cars, but just to see two or three to five, your mind tells you there's a hundred underneath there. Yep. Didn't have to show you. Yeah, and I, I tell you the truth, I didn't even think about the cars. Maybe they should have showed more cars because I only, I just thought, you know, they were mechanics. I don't know. You know, rednecks have lots of cars in their no, you're in right. their yard. You're right. So I was like, I know, okay, there was, whatever. There was a, a mo- more modern movie. I don't know if it was uh, Wrong Turn or whatever, but they kind of show uh, the stumble upon the cars, and you see like just an ocean of cars. Yeah. And you're like, but, man, they've been doing this forever. But then there was, you know, like the net or whatever was covering all of them. And, and you know, and I thought that was odd, but it, it it did strike me as, again, this this is why I'm saying it's predictable. It's like, you know, obviously, you know, the characters, even though they see this graveyard of cars that are covered and, you know, they're knocking on the door and no one's answering and the door opens, it's like... Well, you, you, you don't you don't go in. You don't. You don't. But uh, in seventy four, before and not only did one person <laughs> go did. in, two, three, three people walked in that door. Who does that? Well, they are from Texas. Okay. And there is a sense of hospitality, and almost like an entitlement to hospitality. They were, they were warned. You're at right. The gas station. People don't like you on their property, and they're not afraid to show you. <laughs> you were 17. That's true. Yeah. But it was like, you know. But they were like, desperate. They wanted gas. They needed, you know what I mean? So they, I think it was more like a, uh, if you go back 35 years, 40 years, there was a sense of um, community and uh, not so much of a fear of dying when you go into a house. I mean, uh, they should not have gone a, in. You'll pick up a random hitchhiker in this world. Like, yeah. Come on into my house. You can't not, drive this house anywhere. I'm not saying it's out of character. I'm just saying it's like kind of formulaic for a horror movie. Like, you like you know, you're sitting on the couch watching the movie, saying, "Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't don't go in there. You know, run. What are you doing? Why are you standing there?" But it's like that's kind of what they're supposed to make you feel, I guess. Yeah, and but this it was is very, one of the first movies to do that, so it's almost like the cliche feel that you're feeling that yes. mentality and so, it's like so it maybe this new then. maybe this movie didn't have the same uh feeling for me 
because the you know the formula been has been around for 50 years or That's whatever. True. Well, and it's kind of a play off of the scenes in Psycho. You know, in the house once all the the private detective and all them end up stuck in mother's house. This mm-hmm. is just I mean there's a direct line from Psycho to this movie and there's not much in between at least on the American front. And so you you've basically just got like Texas Psycho plus hoarding. I think that you may have ruined me by showing me Psycho. Oh, it's the Cuz now one. I I compare every every horror movie that I see to Psycho you now. You should. I you mean, you really should. You have seen it in succession. So Psycho was out for a long time mm-hmm. before this came out. Uh we wouldn't show you Scream before showing you the movies that it references. So right. when you see Scream, all the stuff you're learning, you're going to go, oh, oh. But so, but so far, as far as, you know, horror or suspenses, you know, that, that style movie goes, nothing has held a candle to Psycho yet. Okay. Well, and at some point, you're going to stop going, is this better than Psycho? And you're going to go, whoa, look at how they took that thing I know from Psycho and flipped it on its head. Yeah, that would be nice. So. Well, I also read that uh, Toby Hooper wanted to make a modern version of Hansel and Gretel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Before he made this, like it, the, his first idea was to make Hansel and Gretel. Then he wanted to do something with trolls in under a bridge or whatever. So okay. he kind of mixed the two because he uh, he was. I, I don't think he wanted to. He wanted to make money. He wanted to become bigger. So he got the idea from shopping and thinking about mowing people down with a chainsaw. But the Hansel and Gretel thing, I think that that kind of plays into the whole going into the house that you were talking about. Like mm-hmm. that trust, because that story is all about trusting the witch and then, then she turns on you. Right. So I look at the family, the Sawyer family is kind of like a mixture between the trolls under the bridge and the witch and Hansel and Gretel. Gotcha. You know what scares me more than the art direction in this movie, Travis? What's that? The sound design. Yes. Like, how they make a camera shutter sound like my nightmares. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how they did that, but they did that. Something with a, uh, I think it's like a violin bow on a saw bing. or something. Like, yeah, the bing sound, yeah. It was just, it kind of reminded me of the opening sequence of Seven. Yeah. The, the title uh, sequence in, in Seven where the, I think they obviously were inspired by this. Like that that whole, instead of just showing you the macabre images, they actually were like making you feel like you were you were at a forensic scene and the forensic mm-hmm. camera was taking those pictures. On the, the black screen with all the fumbling around and you're just yeah. like, okay, what am I, what am I, what, oh God, the, the noises of death. So this DVD, the German one, they used that sound effect on the copyright disclaimer. So I just wow. popped it in, not really ready to <laughs> bing. I'm like, oh, ooh, dudes, like I'm not ready yet. You got to let me get ready. <laughs> I need to get settled. Jeez. <laughs> well, that, and what's funny is with the, there's not really any theme music for Leatherface. There's no, like, you know, Certain movies, you know, they they have they play the music or the jump scare or whatever it is they give you. Yeah, and there's usually almost a warning with music. This they relied more on the natural sounds of things. There's that scene where they're in the car graveyard, and you're hearing the generator run, but right. you're seeing the cars, and so your brain is trying to work out: is one of those cars running? Are they powering their house on those cars? Are right. all those cars running? And it just gets more and more deafening. And then you find the generator, and it's like, oh, okay, it's a generator, sure. But there is this weird, like, and then them shouting over the sound of the generator and the tension that it builds as you're like, God, they're in danger, and they can't hear each other, let alone what's coming. Like, ooh, excellent yeah. use of sound. And and it builds tension. Same thing with the stupid chicken in yeah. the cage. Like, just yeah. that, that cluck, cluck, that constant clucking. Yeah, this movie didn't have a lot of music, but it had great sound. Yes. Dude. This in the sound in the murders. I mean, geez, Travis, uh, you and I have both talked about, especially that first yeah. <laughs> debut of Leatherface. Man, thump. He, uh, <laughs> yeah, and they it builds up before that with the the squealing, the pig squealing. Oh, jeez. And it was almost like a like you're almost like, what is that? Mm-hmm. And then you realize what it is, and then you just see him. And there was no music to build up. There was nothing. It was just he's there in the doorway. 
and Kirk kind of trips over something and then he's standing face to face to something that we wouldn't have been able to imagine like that just that imagery that I mean Gunnar Hansen's like six foot five with three inch heels like he was just huge and he just filled that doorway and then he just brings that hammer down and you just hear and he, it and he's dressed like a butcher yeah <laughs> from the <laughs> neck down at least yeah I mean he's got yeah. the apron on and everything but I mean just like that there's no cut or there's no editing it's just that that sound of the hammer hitting the head thump he goes down he starts twitching oh the it twitching gives is so awesome. visceral <sighs> yeah and then and then he just pulls his leg into the room and then slams the door and that's when you hear music that boom yeah and it's that's yeah. when you as the audience do your first oh shit Holy shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it wasn't over you know and then like you said who the hell goes in somebody's house that's why you don't go in someone's house and and then Pam gets up and then she does that slow walk almost like that artistic framed picture walk to the house which is like a apparently a dolly shot that they decided that day that we need to get this shot and she goes in and she sees everything she sees and then you're like what what's she gonna do this guy's huge <laughs> and he when he chases her out of that house it's broad daylight. It's not like a traditional horror movie where it's it's midnight or whatever. It's broad daylight, and he chases her, and he grabs her in full speed. Her legs go straight out while he grabs her, and he just one-armed her into the house. And I'm just looking at this. I'm like, holy shit. And then the, the hook. Oh, my God. The hook was amazing. Like, oh, they didn't edit man. that. Like, they show him, put her on that hook, and she slides down. Like well, it's just yeah. they do that awesome job of her like hitting the bottom of the hook and kind of mm-hmm. bouncing, you know, like yeah, it's, and you it's can in feel there. It. Ugh, you gross. feel that, and then he Ugh. goes about his business, <laughs> you know, so carving gross. up Kirk, and it's like it, it's just so mind boggling the the fact that Gunner is is taking a character that he's got no words, you can't see his face, and just everything he's doing. You know, he's admiring the saw, he's checking her, and, and there's no blood. Well, very little, Basically, yeah. hardly any blood. Yeah. So the massacre part, eh, you know, everybody gets massacred, but you, you, would, you were expecting to see him chop that body up, and you really don't even see that, but you see her reactions to it. Dude, yeah. and that makes it so much better. Yeah. Ugh. You hear a lot of people complain that there's not enough chainsaw in this movie. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> For real? This movie... <laughs> I think what people are expecting is a high body count and every kill to be different Mortal Kombat fatalities with the chainsaw, you know? Right. But between the murder of the guy in front of Pam on the hook, right? Ugh. And then the the wheelchair murder. Holy oh, crap. Like which everybody was cheering that on. Dude. And that's, you know, you get the blood <laughs> splatter, which is, you know, it is what it is. It's gross. But it's just, but his, you still like, don't see much. His I mean, it's... diligence, <laughs> you know, he his stick to itiveness in that kill, like that drags mm-hmm. out, and not in like a "oops, we need to cut this down" way, but in like a, you know, proto hostile kind of thing. Like that one really drags out. Ugh. <laughs> and the and the other thing that I noticed that I, I actually wrote it down, I was like, we're so used to the, we're not used to the killer running. Like the fact that he was he was hauling ass carrying a forty five fifty pound chainsaw, and he's so big that he's when they frame it out she's running and she looks like she's half of a person, and he's gaining on her, like that. You're talking about the train scene in Stand by yeah. Me. It's like that whole scene where he he chases her. It's it it makes it even more intense because normally normally the killer isn't that agile, especially being that big. And I mean, he had all this. It, it, it just to me, it's still. I didn't. I didn't really see him as agile. Really, I. I. He looked. He seemed more to me like a Jason, where like you know you can run and run and run, but like he's just gonna slow and steady. He's just gonna get you, you know. Like, you you can't run fast enough from this guy. True. You know what I mean. But. That's the that's the feeling I got from it. But then again, also. But Jason, I mean, we'll get into. I haven't really watching. actually seen yeah. any Jason movies besides 
Freddy versus Jason when I was like 13. Yeah, so. the, the running thing rarely happened in, in those movies. Oh, okay. Uh, first couple. But M- More um, of a trot. He was kind yeah, of, a more of a Dan trot. Marino, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, but then the yeah the third, to me the third murder, uh, is uh Jerry, he kills Jerry. To me, my that's my f- one of my favorite scenes because it shows who Leatherface is. Like he's like he's a child. Yeah, he's like a seven foot child, who you know he he's surprised to see all these people in his house. Like when he sees Jerry, he's like. <gasps> Like it was almost like, what are you doing here? It was like the Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello. Yeah. yeah, he was like, Rrr! and yeah. and he was doing that scream the whole time he's killing uh, Jerry. Then he puts his shit down, <laughs> and he goes to the window and he's like looking out in the window and he's pacing back. He's like, what the fuck? Like, I was. Just- where are all these people coming from? Like, he doesn't yeah. know how to handle this. Why are all these people coming to my house? Right, and he he knows he's going to be in trouble. You can see it in his face. It's almost like a dog after he shits on the rug. And then he's like, I just slaughtered three people. I have no idea where they're coming from. And and he just puts his hands in his face, his face, you know, right in his hands. And you could see he's distraught. But he's like a five-year-old distraught. Yeah. Like, I just tried to take some cookies out of the kitchen, and I dropped the cookie jar and broke it all over the place. Yeah. So it just, to me, was a <laughs> He did more acting in that scene than in the entire movie of... Uh, Clark's, but uh, wow, <laughs> like just all that character study, because he he studied with the mentally ill. He went and hung out with the mentally ill, and you could just see all that in his performance. To me, yeah. that made that made him an iconic villain, and almost like a sympathetic villain in a way, because you you realize he's not doing this for a maniacal reason. You know, if that makes sense, that's what I got from it. Yeah. He's almost doing it to please his family. Yeah, and he's just messed up. He's definitely messed up. He's just messed up. He's not. But he's not maniacal. No, he's not. Um, he's what's, just, a, what's, a, what's the word for that? He's a five-year-old in the body of a grizzly bear. And, the, yeah. and a family of cannibals. <laughs> so he's probably brought up to do this. So here's the thing. And I spent more time on this today than I ever had before. And so, George, on your first watch, I don't know how much of this you picked up on. And... I might be wrong on some of this, so put a little asterisk at the beginning of this, guys. But from what I'm picking up, because I'm not, I, I'm trying not to read external sources before we do these, because I don't just want to parrot what other people have written. So the family, when we get to the the dinner, you've got Leatherface, you've got Hitchhiker guy, you've got older brother guy, and then you've got Grandpa and Dead Grandma. How'd you like the Dead Grandma reveal, by the <laughs> way, George? <laughs> There was a dead grandma reveal? Upstairs. Oh, jeez. You didn't see the other body that they She found runs up. upstairs. She, she, she sees Oh, grandpa. when she when she runs upstairs? Oh, when she when she ran upstairs, I thought both of them were dead. Well, uh, yeah, you're supposed to. You're supposed yeah. to. Cuz that <coughs> grandpa's really really gross. But okay, so he, I uh, the family dynamic of the Leatherface family. Where are the parents? Like I immediately start thinking about like you know, real life families where the actual parents just leave their children to be raised by their parents, right? The grandparents, uh, for whatever reason, you know, killed in the war, which is probably at this time, not unreasonable. Uh, right. But you get that weird thing where, you know, grandparents try, but maybe fail to, uh, secure the structure of the family. Plus they're cannibals. So that probably doesn't help. And you get that weird thing where you can't tell if the oldest brother is a brother or the dad. I was going to ask I was going to ask that. But he calls uh, he calls uh grandpa grandpa. But again, that's not conclusive. Uh, no. But from the way that he berates them, I feel like he's definitely the big brother, not the dad of the the two. When I saw it when I was younger, I thought he was their father. But recently watching it, he's definitely not their father. So here's he's the other thing the that I don't know. Can you tell on the DVD, George, much detail as to what's going on with Leatherface's mask or hair? Because here's um, the thing. I had never noticed this before. I knew that there was some makeup on the face, but mm-hmm. now seeing it in like what would be as close to 16 millimeter as you could, he's kind of put in the role of the mom 
of the family. Yes. yes, I did notice that. He was. I didn't notice it when he was, you know, beginning in the movie, but in the in the dinner scene, and just before, um, he's wearing a wig. <coughs> yeah, he's got the lady wig. Yes. He's got the lady it's like makeup a bun on it. And the way that he like kind of bounces around. I, I mentioned Mrs. Doubtfire because <laughs> I kept thinking, oh, jeez. Yeah. Like. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack there that I don't think that we have time for tonight. And his whole his whole personality change. Like when he put that outfit on, he was totally different than he was when he was slaughtering the three that came into the house. Yeah. Well, also the oldest brother or slash dad was there as well. Right. But he he was putting on like a feminine voice. Like when he asked him, "What you, what are you doing?" He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. "Like he was kind of talking in a high pitch kind of." Mm. Uh, he was very submissive. I was just, I just thought that was submissive. Yeah, he just became super submissive. But he was very he feminine. There. Like to me, I mean, this might be a good time to, to kind of talk about the source material, which would be Ed Gein, who uh, Anthony Perkins, uh, Norman Bates is also based on. Mm-hmm. His obsession with uh, being, I wouldn't say he's trans, uh, transvestite, but he seems to be taking on the persona of the skin that he's putting on. Yeah, I can see that. So uh, I don't know if they purposely did that. I know I saw an interview with Gunnar Hansen where he said the masks give him a chance to be a different personality because you can't see his face and because he doesn't talk. So I don't Mm. know if that means anything. But yeah, I did notice the makeup as well. And they cut a scene out where he actually puts the makeup on with a a powder cake Mm -hmm. and then lipstick and whatever. Luckily, they put that back in to Silence of the Lambs. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yes, they did. <laughs> Who's also based on him? Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Every good slasher movie villain for what the past fifty years has been based on one weird guy who never, as far as I can tell, actually slashed anybody. Did he? He was just a they grave robber. They said he killed two people, but he was more of like a grave robber. Oh, Ed, always <laughs> oh, killing Ed. people when I'm trying to give you credit <laughs> for just being a grave robber. Also, a craftsman, from what I understand. Craftsman, yeah. Furniture maker. And Did you catch that the lampshade <laughs> over the table is like a lady's face sketched yes, I over? Because I didn't ever see that before this time. And I think I was just, for the first time, actually sitting down and critically watching this rather than just having it on, you know. For it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. that. Super creepy. But yeah, that's all straight. I mean, not straight out of the, the Gein thing, but definitely ooh, influenced by. Definitely. Everybody needs a hobby, though. Which is why the movie was originally called Head Cheese. Ew. The first title was Head Cheese, and then it was Leatherface. Did you guys notice when Sally runs into the gas station, right? She gets out from the table. Uh, a lot of really weird stuff happens that we've still got to talk about. But did anybody notice the hook that she almost runs directly into behind no. the older brother? I guess this is before the dinner. This is when she first escapes because she's right. still trusting... The older brother, and you have like literally half a second where he's not groping her, and then right <laughs> away he starts putting his hands on. And you're like, oh, I don't think we can trust this guy, but yeah. it is the '70s, so we got to give him a few more seconds. And then yeah, de- definitely can't <laughs> trust that guy. But <laughs> one yeah, more groping on that, I'm done. <laughs> there's one of those hooks, the meat hooks, directly behind him on the wall, and the angle when she runs in, she's headed right for it. And so if you don't know that he's a bad guy, you get this sense of like, oh, there's a hook there. She needs to be more careful. Right. Turns I out she know. she does need to be more careful. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that. Although that was one of the things that I I didn't see coming. It, when him changing? W- well, not him changing. What I thought was probably going to happen was when he left to get the truck and he left the door open. Mm. Um, I thought, well, you know, that's the end for her because Leatherface is coming back. And then the truck pulled up. And he gets out of the truck. And again, I'm thinking, you know, he's going to get to the, the the frame of the door and then, boom, there's Leatherface behind him or something like right. that. And and instead you got, you know, a bag and some rope. And I was like, oh, this is he's not what I expected. Mm. Yeah. And apparently in the background to their, sh- like over their shoulder the whole time is like a, a meat locker full of like barbecuing yeah. body parts. Yeah. yeah, you could see some more detail of what looked to be uh, some human cuts in the smoker, yeah. and she you can tell that she's like put off by it. But earlier, they established that she's kind of grossed out by meat. So 
you've got this moment as an audience where you think it's character development coming back again, but really, oh no, that's people bits. <laughs> <laughs> that is the people bits. Yeah, and even even when they were driving, like she was she was right next to uh, right next to him while he's driving, and he's driving her somewhere, right? I didn't know that they were going back to the house to the house right. where she had escaped from. Right. That's good. Um, then they did it right. No, I just thought he was just another creep. Right. Like this girl can't catch a break. And, and then so you see the hitchhiker and then, well, you see the hitchhiker and I'm like, Oh, the, you know, the yeah. hitchhiker and him know each other. And okay, that's another twist. And then you, re- and then you realize that, Oh, that, that this is, this is a family. Okay. I did not see that coming. And what's funny is that scene, I'm going to have to watch it again. I don't know if you caught any of this. Most of the good writing dialogue is in those scenes. That chaos of him bringing her home, mm-hmm. talking to the hitchhiker, mm-hmm. and then talking to, to Bubba, mm-hmm. who's Leatherface. Yep. And uh, just the things that he's saying tells you a lot more that I would never even knew. Like, just to hear him say, you know, you should have never, I told you never leave your brother home alone. So it's like... He's mm-hmm. scolding the hitchhiker for being out, and that's why Le- Leatherface was, you know, given a long rope, which caused him to do a bunch of things that he probably shouldn't have done, like destroy the door, like destroy the friggin' door. Yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. Big fan. Are you a big fan, George? I'm getting there. Getting there. Well, the good thing is, is that we can take a road trip to go to the house and get barbecue if you want. Where is it? <laughs> it's in Texas. Oh, they relocated it. And they turned it into a restaurant. That's cool. So you can get barbecue there. I don't know if I want to drive there, though. I don't know. I, I'm seeing a lot of... I I, I, I might want to do a road trip to to uh, Austin, Texas. It looks like a lot of fun. What do you think? Dan? Dan's about halfway there. I mean, yeah, if you guys come to me, and then <laughs> I'll hop in the car with you for a second and say, hey, I'll see you there, and then I'll fly to Austin. Fly to Austin. And That's I'll fine. meet you there. I, I'll fly there. <laughs> um... <laughs> so Dan's like, no, I don't want to be in a well, car with you guys for ten hours. The or gas whatever it's station be. is f- is there. The gas station that she runs to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's now like a little cafe, and you can. They have little one person or two person shed type uh, cabins that you can stay right there. You mm. can you can basically enjoy the area and sleep in these little cabins but don't wander too far away right where they f- actually filmed that you it's the exact spot where a lot of that stuff happens so i don't know it's interesting i'd like to maybe fly there and do that yeah maybe wait till this you know pandemic uh, <laughs> let's do sp- let's do spring 2022 spring 2022 that sounds We're about heading optimistic heading at this point but. uh another fun fact is um he Toby Hooper tried to go for a PG rating <laughs> with this movie. <laughs> what? Seventies <laughs> PG, George. Seventies PG. Yeah, seventies PG, which is it, yeah. He apparently that's why it's not so gory. I was going to say. Suggestive. I was going to think. I was thinking. Uh, well, at what point did he give up and just say f it? Because it's. I mean, it's a disturbing movie, but it still would have minus. I don't know what got at the R rating, uh, that he, what he was going to take out to give it the PG. But when you watch it, it's really technically there's no nudity. There's hardly any language. And you could have non sexualized nudity in the seventies PG. So right. I mean you can get mm. a boob in there if you want to. Uh but they I mean full frontal in some movies. Anyway. Yeah. Uh you know, you can get a, a naked lady in your movie or a naked dude if you want. <laughs> uh but it has to be non sexualized. But in this movie they don't even bother. Right. And but then the violence you know, you don't see any junks. No, I mean it's technically a t- the subject matter's effed up, but it's really technically not a lot of visual. I mean, heck, is there even know. a lot of cursing? I don't think there's hardly. I don't. I don't remember hearing any other than maybe a couple words towards Franklin, but oh, uh, poor Franklin, poor Franklin, <laughs> <laughs> who apparently the cast did not like either. Oh, <laughs> poor Franklin, again. Yeah, I was just gonna look at quick look at the old. Uh, Content advisory. Let's see. <laughs> How mu- I just want to see language-wise. What are they? Yeah. There's like no cursing. So yeah, there's no cursing. There's very little violence except for that. I mean, you can't butcher a guy in a wheelchair for like a full 30 seconds and expect right. a PG. <laughs> <laughs> and 
hey George, do you want to come eat dinner with my grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be really excited if you would join us. Your grandpa? So guys, did you notice that? Okay, th- <laughs> I just noticed this for the first time. Uh, she gets her finger cut. Ew. Uh, a lot of hand mutilation in this movie. Not a fan. Mm-hmm. It makes that hurts to see. Which is a real cut, by the way. Oh, for real? Yeah. Ew. They they couldn't get the gag to work, so, so they, were just they like, actually screw it, really we're just sliced gonna... her finger. Jeez, I hope she got an extra ten dollars that day or whatever they were paying her. <laughs> now, according Jeez. to Gunnar Hansen, he did it without her knowledge. Oh. Uh, but he's a storyteller, so I'm not really sure mm. if she if they got her permission or not. But he said they were they were on hour thirty of like a thirty four hour shooting of that scene and the scenes before. And oh, he was just like, he couldn't get the bladder and the tube to get the blood on the blade and, and it wasn't working. So he just, and they had s- scotch tape on the blade and he just turned his body, ripped it all off and cut her finger. It It is definitely a real cut, but whether they got her permission or not, I don't know. That's gross. Uh, did you notice wow. when grandpa starts getting all hot and bothered, he actually mimics or pantomimes milking a cow for a second. No, I didn't. so gross. I did not see that. It gave me like that was the thing that got me closest to like bubble guts. I was just like, oh no, not okay. <laughs> no, I didn't notice that. It's really gross. It's just like real yeah. quick, just boom, boom, two hands, and then didn't see that. Yeah, go back. I just that's a notice. He kept dropping the hammer. Oh well, yeah. I mean, that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you speak about dro- let's talk about that. Okay. So they're trying to bash her in the head, but they're also like trying not to help grandpa too much, you know, because grandpa used to be really good at murdering people. Like, oh, this movie. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) But there's something I want to point out that nobody ever talks about. And this is just, this is just, this is the Dan thing. But you hear often in the, the zeitgeist, right? The discussions surrounding the slasher movie tropes. That, oh, the women always run away and fall down, and it's so sexist because women don't always fall down when they run. And that's true. Uh, I've seen track and field. Those women (laughs) generally don't fall down. They're not being chased by a chainsaw-wielding man, though. So I don't know. Uh, A jury's still out on whether this is realistic or not. But the reason I bring this up, nowadays, women running away from a slasher is like the tropiest trope, right? It's right up there with all the other ones that we've already hit on. It might be the top one that gets made fun of. But in 1974, can either of you off the top of your head name a movie in which a female victim is running away screaming from a an armed, masked, and or dangerous assailant in a slasher context? And I think of a movie where that happens? Earlier than happen? Texas Chainsaw. Uh... Well, I mean, maybe not runs, but then and you have a full knowledge of, of like the Italian films and stuff, so I don't know how far back that goes if that if that happens. But well, the damsel in distress, you can go all the way back to Fay Ray. Well, of course, but I'm Kong, talking but about the specific scenario that gets repeated in every slasher movie. Right. Sorry, George, spoiler. Every slasher movie for the rest of the 90s, at 90s, least. Yeah. So in 1973, November of 1973, the movie Torso is released in New York City. Okay. Okay. Uh, Torso is the fifth, I believe, Sergio Martino Giallo. It's also the closest to an American slasher movie in terms of content. It's also a super progenitor of both Halloween and Friday the 13th. Like, you see a lot of the visual style of Friday the 13th. You see a lot of the um, kind of even the mask itself in certain scenes looks kind of like the Michael Myers mask. Okay. It's super baller. It's a good movie. It's on Prime all the time. You guys should watch it. But there's a scene in there where they do, as far as I can say, the the first of the traditional slasher lady in the woods trying to get away from a killer. Trips over a stick. But in that <laughs> scene, she is high. Okay. She's come out of a drug den, and her senses are all jacked up, which makes the appearance of the scary guy extra scary, right? Mm -hmm. because she's high so she's not seeing him well and he's able to like kind of pop around and seem to almost teleport right you hear this later uh, Mm -hmm. but without the drugs right it's just oh he now teleports certain killers do (laughs) but this Mm -hmm. killer doesn't teleport she's just high so she can't keep track of him anyway 
I really like that Torso does that because as like the, you know, one of the earlier examples of this trope, it's not that she's incompetent. It's just that she's high. Right. The reason I bring this up is one year later when Texas Chainsaw Massacre comes out, you have a similar situation. Yes, she's stumbly as all get out, but she has a massive head wound <laughs> and right, a likely right. a concussion, right? Mm-hmm. So what happens is later, I think directors look at these scenes, they're like, okay, we got to get all the tropes down. We got a sharp weapon. We got a scary guy. We got a mask. He's tall. He's bulky. Also, we got to get this lady, and she's got to run a long way and fall down a lot. Fall a lot, yeah. And it's like, well, she has a... <sighs> guys, <laughs> like... <laughs> so Do your homework. Credit yeah, goes to this movie for... Maybe ripping off torso. Maybe it's a coincidence that one year later they do the exact same thing. Uh, but they at least justify the stumbling. Because without the stumbling, she's going to outrun both those guys. Yes. Because she's in good shape and they're both gross. So it's a good, like, trapping, you know, to put her in so that she is now more vulnerable to the chase, thus making it a lot more the train in Stand By Me and a lot less, you know, uh, the hare escaping the tortoise. Right. No, yeah. that, and that, I think that plays through. I mean, it doesn't look, it looks like they did that on purpose because they, they even show when she's running down the driveway, uh, the hitchhiker's kind of running zigzag. He's like doing that alligator run. Yeah. Where he's going zigzag. He's almost like running with her. But he's just menacing her, man. Yeah. Like he's, he's already caught up to her and he's just kind of just zigzagging. So yeah. they kind of show she's not, She's not running like a damsel. She's she's running and she's injured. And he's like slashing her back and stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's it's super mutilady. Again, what are you trying to do a PG for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, just ignore <laughs> the mutilation of this woman. That's our main character at this point. That was, like, that was a good knife. It was a. It was a good knife. It wasn't a knife, guys. It was a uh, straight a razor. razor. Yeah. But isn't that what he calls it? Does yeah. He, call he, it says, a, he says, "I have this knife. It's a good knife. It's a good knife." Yeah. Well, he Before didn't he watch enough Jolly, him. I guess, because everybody knows <laughs> the straight razor is the preferred weapon of every Jollo killer up to that point. <laughs> yeah. Oddly enough, not in Torso. Guys, you got to watch Torso. I'm going to have to watch Torso. All right, well, let's assign it. Shoot. It's not, is it? I guess it wouldn't be considered mainstream. No. I mean, it. it's one that everybody hears about when they've stepped through two or three levels of the Italian movie. It's not at all like something normal people have heard of. Unless they saw it on Prime. One one thing, I, is it common in the 70s for cars electric to work without the keys in it? When Franklin starts freaking out mm-hmm. that they took the keys with him, they don't have the keys to the van, I'm like, the, the lights are on and the the, the horn works. Yeah, those things would, because I remember even in the early 90s, you could run your battery out accidentally leaving your lights on. My parents did that at least once. Probably yeah, my fault. Okay. Sorry, that's mom. another. That's another thing that I thought too. I was like, why are why why are the lights on? Yeah, it's definitely able. You're able to do that because you can get. When I was a kid, you can get in an old car and just turn the lights on. I and guess maybe you can still do yeah, that now. You could do that now. I don't know. It's a little to, different I have to with test, computers I have to test stuff, it out. But, but when he was freaking out that there's no keys, I'm like, he was freaking about no. everything. So, are there any negative? Other than it being extremely predictable, other than the giant twist at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's no twists other than that. Yeah, that giant dead grandpa that's not dead. Or yeah. is he? Man, for a while there, I almost thought they were uh, doing a weekend at Bernie's thing. Right. And I thought that too. But then you saw his mouth moving. And, and then, then he, he starts on milking her finger. them cows. You're just like, <laughs> oh, gross. Yeah. Yeah, he's 108 apparently. Before he oh, turns her into Ric Flair, like, whoa. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of blood in that crimson mask, guys. That's <laughs> true. How about that uh, ending, though? The ring around the giant truck bit? It, that was fun. Oh, it's so, because you're just like, oh, they're going to get in the, oh, they're going to get out. Oh, they're, like, it's hard to track what's going to happen. It's fun. It's unpredictable. And then he throws a freaking wrench in the guy's <laughs> face. <laughs> and, then, and then he drops a saw on his leg. And then we never see the uh, driver, driver again. guy again. He's just left to his own devices. I <laughs> he's hope he's still okay. out there on, on the Hill Road, whatever the uh, name of that road is. Yeah, I thought that too. But then I thought, I was like, well, he's he's got fresh legs and everybody else is injured, so he'd be fine. Well, the hitchhiker guy is now a pancake. Yes. That was a good run over, <laughs> by the way. As far as like low <laughs> yeah. budget movie run overs, that's a good one. That one's effective. Ugh. 
Well, apparently they. I, I read up on this because I thought it was kind of neat how how close the truck got to the actor before he got hit, and it was clearly a dummy. But the truck is like right on top of him, right before they cut. Uh huh. They filmed it backwards. Oh, that's smart. Ah. Oh. So they pulled the truck as close as they could to the actor, and then they backed the truck up. Why don't they do that more often? Because that was super effective. Yeah. And then and then they cut, obviously, with editing. And I heard Toby, Toby Hooper talking about just removing three or four frames from things mm-hmm. just totally changes the scene. And I'm like, oh, wow, you think of that. Like, you know, it's 24 frames per second. Yeah, and, then, and then they take, take a couple out and just kind of, especially with the, the Franklin when he kills Franklin, that jump scare of them yelling for everybody. And then all of a sudden... He's like, I hear something. And then right when he turns the flashlight, like Leatherface is right there. And just, he said he took like three or four frames frames out and it totally changed that jump scare. Hmm. It is a very well-tuned movie. Like there, the jump scares are all like A and A plus. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that misses its mark. And they do it right because the first couple jump scares really don't warn you at all. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just like it just happens, and then you're like having a what the f- what the hell, and then and then it happens again, and then you're like oh there's a third person in the house, and then it happens again. You already know he's there, but they still get you. Mm-hmm. And then with the the Franklin with the chair, they they do the old fashioned jump scare with the the beam of the sun of uh, the flashlight. Yeah, I, it, it, to me it it still holds up, and the it's in- not my nostalgia talking. The I think in- the entire second half of the movie. Was just screaming. Yes, the entire second it was half. Chaos. It was just screaming. So they noisy. Didn't, they didn't stop screaming the entire second half of the movie. <laughs> and not that that's a bad thing. I mean, I I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but I was just like, Jesus Christ, she's screaming. Well, when they're like mocking constantly. her scream, when they're doing the who yeah. at the table, like, oh, <laughs> it's so gross. Everything in this that's movie. <laughs> Like I felt a need to bathe midway through this movie, and it hasn't yeah. left me yet. Like, but what's so great is as I'm watching that. It reminds me of when Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs pulls his shirt out just a little bit and does the oh mm. when she was screaming. Mm. Yep. You know he completely was referencing. Uh, uh, is it Joe Dante? Who? Not Joe Dante. Uh, jo- Jonathan Demi. Jonathan Demi. Demi was completely channeling that movie with that scene, and and I forgot about them doing that at the table. So that kind of made me appreciate that more. That little reference, just a little little nod to one of the most important horror movies ever made, as they call it. Yeah, well, if if the if the point was to just be as disturbing as possible, um, then I believe they succeeded at well, that. They were one of the first in the genre. I don't want to say they created the genre, because uh, I'm sure there were s- some things ahead of that. This the whole slasher thing, because mm-hmm. he's really not a slasher. He definitely has more depth. To his character, than yeah. just like some guy doing whatever. Like there, it's all there. Whether you choose to find it or not, it's up to you. But there's definitely a lot of depth to that character that they don't touch on. You know what? All right, so Psycho, which I compare everything to, and you should going forward. You get you get the thirty seconds at the end where he's thinking as mother in mother's right. voice. Blah 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 blah. In this movie, you know what you were saying how you would like to you would have liked to see him act as mother and and ha- and have like uh, 20 more minutes of the movie and 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 see that. That's what this was. Mm-hmm. From the point that they're coming up the driveway through the dinner scene through the end. Mm-hmm. That's what you see. It explains everything. Yeah. Of you, why they are who they are and how the, how they right. got there. No 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 you know quick wrap up or mm-hmm. tie it up in a bow. It was they don't leave that to the imagination in this movie. Right. And that's that that's what we're talking about how that that big twist is the family cuz we're so programmed to think oh it's just the, it's just the killer. He's lumbering through the woods. He's killing people for revenge or whatever it is he's doing and credits. Yeah. This you see him slaughter people, you see him dealing with it mentally. You still don't know why. Mm-hmm. Then you meet his brothers. You realize they're all they're all a family, and that's why he's so effed up. And you get that twenty minutes yes, of why he's absolutely. effed up. Absolutely, yes. And definitely. this does fit well into uh, what you're going to see over the next 
let's call it 15 years or so, uh, you're going to have multiple schools of thought as to how you should treat Psycho when you're making your own slasher movie. And yeah. Chainsaw's ch- decision is to set you up with all the same set pieces, but skew each one just a bit. So you've got dead mother upstairs, but now mm-hmm. you've also got dead grandpa. Twist, dead grandpa's not quite dead yet, right? But that's your it's your psycho uh, reference where you see the dead lady. And He's you get close. The, the scary bit. And then you're like, oh, but she has a partner, so that's my twist. But then the twist on the twist is, oh... No, actually, that guy's still alive, and he's about to milk that cow. But yeah, so going forward, George, keep an eye on these movies because you're gonna see. Uh, it's best not to, you know, worry about it till the movie's over and you're analyzing after the fact because you'll ruin the suspense. But uh, to look at how each writer decides to kind of acknowledge Psycho either as the elephant in the room or, you know, coyly pretend like they're actually getting away with ripping the thing off when we all know that's what they're doing. Right. Mm. And how do they decide to deal with the elephant? In this case, it's, you know, uh, the bait and switch with grandpa. And then instead of having Norman Bates, the calm, cool, collected psychopath, you have squealing, jumping up and down with a chainsaw, you know, Norman to 11 kind of. <laughs> yeah, he's like a five year old Norman. And going forward, in the body, uh, that in he a called lot him of Norman, Norman to 11. <laughs> to 11. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that's funny uh, I think that went over Travis said the first time I didn't hear it okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't know I don't know if we're going to go over complaints I, I only have one I, I kind of wish I've I've already said my piece yeah I just wish they would have developed um, this Sally character a little bit more I would have really liked to see her dynamic with her brother because it, it, it kind of gets lost that, that Franklin's her brother and I mm-hmm. think they should have maybe uh, suggested that she was her, his caretaker a little bit better and maybe showed her frustration with him a little bit more before he gets to the annoying part. Like, just kind of show that he's he's kind of like Bubba. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's an overgrown child who's frustrated with his situation. Mm-hmm. Like, he's the same character as Leatherface. He's, he's not killing people. And and he's he's doing tantrums and he's this and that, but it's almost like they developed him more than they developed her. And yeah. obviously, she's the one that you want to empathize with the most. I wonder though if part of that is because if they overdevelop Sally at the beginning, you'll know she's the final girl. Yeah, I agree with that. Whereas where can, you're at right that. now, you're overdeveloping Franklin, and you're pretty darn sure that guy's not going to get away from Leatherface. Right. So it leaves a little bit more like, oh, who's going to, is anybody going to get out? Because this is pre-slasher, right? We don't know right. about Final Girls yet. In fact, uh, <laughs> final girls, right. is she the first <laughs> Final Girl in an American slasher? Because uh, Psycho doesn't have a real Final Girl. No. This might be Except your first Mrs. one. Uh, Mrs. Bates. She's your Final Girl. Ooh. Yeah. Hey. But now I don't know if uh, they do that. So, yeah, she would be the f- the sole survivor, one of the first. So you kind of expect her to get it. And then when she gets away, yeah. it's like a nice little twist, a little <coughs> surprise. Ooh, she got away and she didn't need, you know, to call in the the police. She just needed a truck bed and a good jump. <laughs> well, I'm not saying they needed the walking dead her where it's like, oh, they're <laughs> overdeveloping her. She's going to be dead soon. But yeah, they could have instead of having the other girl, Pam, reading horoscopes or just the, the mindless banter, they just could have given her more lines in the beginning to kind of make her just to see her dynamic with her brother because again i didn't even realize that was her brother they're talking about the grandfather's grave that was uh desecrated and that's why they were there but that was kind of lost you didn't even know that's why they were at the cemetery you yeah, just kind of figured that it part out. they don't really hammer home hard enough for a first time viewer to catch right. on to but i mean and then they end up they end up in this house they don't really explain they say it's his his grandfather's house but then it, it, to me it was kind of haphazard and it could have been done better and some of the other nonsense could have been changed or taken out that's all but that's the thing with her character development lacking you know you say oh they're gonna walking dead her but (laughs) keep in mind they only walking dead people because for 30 years we got used to that being the final girl so Mm -hmm. walking dead itself is a response to all the 80s slashers 
where the one girl who actually gets character development is usually your final girl. And right. so Walking Dead's playing off your assumptions there, but this is pre that assumption. So Right. Uh, no, I, I got it. I, I would just, if I had any complaint about this movie, it's just that there are set pieces that I can never get out of my mind. You know, door slam, uh, grandpa <sighs> at dinner, uh, the final chase. But there's parts yeah. of this movie that I've, I just completely forgot. And I yeah. tune out toward the, the middle. It's like the low points are too low. It doesn't lag in terms of timing, right? It's only 83 minutes and it moves. But some bits are just so forgettable that in my recollection, they just disappear. But the good stuff is so good. But the good stuff is so <laughs> good. All right. I think we can all agree that this is a near perfect movie. Pretty darn it, close. It's near. pretty close. It's one of it's one of my favorites that I rarely watch, if that makes sense. I'll tell you But that, when I get to watch it, I, I just enjoy it. If I have the choice between watching this or watching the 2003 remake, I mean, that's a toss-up. That's a pretty even toss-up. They well, did a good job on that remake. <laughs> they did. They did. And some of the stuff they did that's controversial in terms of, like, cuts and maybe adjustments to the progression of the story... Uh, offend the the biggest deepest fans of this original Mm -hmm. the purists but the the movie itself is just as successful well they they do just enough back story to where you're you you, it's it's fresh but they don't totally rob zombie it where you're like oh my god seriously yeah (laughs) i will say i mentioned it before on a previous episode there's an alternate ending where like a SWAT team busts in okay. sometime after the occurrence. And, you know, the police who are taking these photos at the beginning of the movie, uh, both movies, it leads to like a warrant and a SWAT team and they bust in. And it's just like, yeah, it's kind of like the end of Halloween four. Mm-hmm. Where you're just like, yeah, law and order only <laughs> like uh, with more MP fives and, and laser right. sights. <laughs> It was cool. I'm glad they cut it. It wouldn't have worked, but like it was a fun idea. I'm glad they put it on film and I got to watch it as an extra. Mm. Yeah, my the only two things I didn't like about the remake was the over production of Leatherface's costume. Yeah, like but the, they're gonna do the that. The sculpt, they're, the sculpted I mean, face, like you it, to know me, it was like. Do that. But that's what kind of makes it's almost like they over art direct it like same thing with any michael myers michael myers face has never been as good as it was in the original because it's like they try to sculpt yeah no, the face I, I they agree. try to sculpt the emission sometimes uh, the they don't though i mean halloween 5 i'm pretty sure they they forgot what the mask was supposed to look like <laughs> yeah it's like what is that it's not michael myers that's bob myers halloween 2 also <laughs> Guys, I hate Halloween too. It's the lesser Myers. It's the lesser. It's the Oscar Meyer. <laughs> it's the Oscar Meyer. <laughs> His head looks all fat. Why it was? I hate uh, Halloween it's, well, too. It's a different actor. Uh, have you ever m- met? Um, is it Nick Castle? Not Nick Castle. Is it Nick? Ca- yeah, Nick Castle played him in the second one. Uh, he has a very round head. I like Nick very Castle a lot, but they should have fixed his mask because he looked like he was wearing a, um, like a powdered sugar donut on his head. Yeah. Well, they yeah, I, I I love it though. <laughs> I I hate to love it, but I love to hate it. I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't contribute. I used we'll to see. think I loved it, and then recently I went back and just gave it a fresh look. My wife and I both were like, "Yeah, let's watch two. We haven't seen that in years." And then about ten minutes in, we're like, "Oh, God!" There's there's only like two or three good sequences. In but then movie, Dana so. Carvey shows up, and you're just like, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa!" <laughs> like he play. likes to play with the camera. <laughs> But yeah, the and then they do the Scooby Doo ending. Yeah, <laughs> and then they rip off Deep Red like wholesale. <laughs> George, you're gonna be like, hey, I've seen this before in Deep Red. I almost feel like I've seen the movie now. Mm. You guys have talked about. There's it so enough. Much. There's enough change. So yeah, and the house. I didn't like the house. Back to T- TCM, the remake. I I thought the house was ridiculously huge. Yeah, I didn't like the house in the, in remake. the, the remake, and I didn't really care. I mean, I know it's like cool for the movie nerds to see the ain't it cool guy like in the cast of the family but uh it took me out of the movie and i was like oh hey that's that me- movie critic guy <laughs> but anything with ermy in it i, I enjoy i do love yeah. arlie ermy yeah he's good stuff but, and he was good he took something that was already done and and added to it so yeah that's that, that's what that movie is they took what existed and they added to it 
is okay with by me. So which Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequels does George need to watch? Sequels? Does he need to watch two? No. No. That was just kind of a three grab, I think. Three is okay. Three's okay. But only because, like, Kane Hodder's involved, so it's pretty great. And it finally gives you, like, the chainsaw you were looking for in the first movie, yeah. you know? But, yeah. But you. I did love the commercial for three, where he gets the chainsaw from the river oh, or yeah. the lake. The yeah. whole Excalibur thing, it was pretty yep. sweet. That was kind cool. Uh, uh, new Next Generation with Matthew McConaughey. Uh-huh. I heard that was terrible. Skip but it. I heard that's the true sequel. Do you know that that, I think, may be the first slasher movie I ever saw? The one with McConaughey? Yeah. So cut to 1995 right. or 6. I am too young to be watching slasher movies. I'm hanging out at my neighbor's house. This is a true story. Hanging out at my neighbor's house. His his grandpa lived down the road, and we'd hang out anytime he came to visit his grandpa. Well, across the street from him was a rental house, mm. and these girls were scary and luckily, the only thing they ever did to us was bring us taped off of uh, premium cable uh, slasher movies that they're okay. scary, uh, you know, kid rock r- <laughs> type father had <laughs> left around the house. And so <laughs> thank you, kid rock and your scary daughters for. I uh, <laughs> wonder if it was kid rock. They brought us uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. And then on the same tape was the movie Elves. Have you ever seen Elves, Travis? Mm. There's it's elves. It's like from the 80s, right? Yeah, late yeah. 80s. There's elves that kill people at Christmas. And oh, there's also Nazis for some reason. <laughs> and there's like a creepy incest undertone, which luckily I missed as a kid. Because that'll Is it anything like up. ghoulies? <laughs> it's a lot like ghoulies, yeah. Only okay. only worse. Only worse. worse. Ghoulies. Awesome. And it's... If that's possible. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation. We fast forwarded through it to see the gore and the boobs. There were no boobs, and the gore was terrible. Right. Uh, elves. I saw my first guy get stabbed in the torso and cough out blood, and that scared the bejesus out of me. And then there was full frontal from a lady who had to be 50 years old. Nice. Well, you never saw The Shining, yeah. so. <laughs> I hadn't seen The Shining yet, so. <laughs> right. This was my first traumatic nudity. I need to see The Shining, too. You do need to see The Shining. You haven't seen The Shining, George? Oh. No. Oh. It's on the list. You just made the list. <laughs> 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 That's going to be my catchphrase. I know I know about <laughs> The Shining, though. Like, I, I know like the the storyline. Yeah, but it's but still... But I know that there... I mean, it's a Kubrick. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. yeah. So I know that there's so much more to it when you watch it than just the plot like oh, there's so much more visually you told going me, on yeah you mentioned that you'd watch the youtube videos about the shining without actually watching yes. the shining yes but so i've also heresy. watched other kubrick films which were fantastic yeah, um, he, he's a good director so i i want to <laughs> see it and apparently he took like a bajillion years to film it and it's damn near perfect i i, I haven't seen it and i need to see it okay so we'll definitely uh, just, let's just leave it at that. we'll see what we can do Put it in the curriculum. Yeah, dun, dun, please. Dun. So yeah, sequel wise, I don't know if there's anything he needs to see. I know the the one called Leatherface. That's number goes three. All, yeah, that goes all the way. No, no. There's a there's another one. What? That came out like in the two thousands. Yeah. Called Leatherface, and it's like the beginning. It shows him all the way back to when he was a kid. Well, there's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, right? Which is the sequel to the remake. Yeah. Now that one restored, like that one restored the faith of the, the diehards because it put back in. They redid, the part of the first movie that they didn't do in the remake, as part okay. of, the beginning. So I don't, I don't think there's any, anything he needs to say. Uh, I think the remake is a pretty good, pretty good, uh, starting point. Because it it, it gives you that gore, and it gives you that. Um, modernization of it but it just to me the 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 face was too expression it had too much expression on it like mean looking to me the the thing that makes leatherface so scary is that that dead look that so the remake is just extra credit yeah it was like from 2003 it's something to watch if it's on like hbo or you know something where you're gonna see it unedited and it's on, and it's free, so you've got an evening to kill. You might as well. If it sh- if I it pops up on it. Prime, 
check it out. Like but it's not like, don't rush out and watch it, you know? No. Okay. Not like the next movie we're going to watch. <laughs> Which is? I don't know. Are we ready to reveal? <gasps> Tell him what he's won. <clears throat> we are going to take you down a road, a rabbit hole, if you will, with Tim Burton's Batman. Dun, 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 George. 1989. I'm smiling. The movie that made superhero movies serious for a while. Okay. <laughs> cool. You you have you ever seen Batman, George? I have. The only th- the ones I've seen are the... Uh, the newest ones. And you've seen okay. all three of the yeah. new ones? Yeah, it begins Nolan Dark Knight and Rises. So you yeah. saw the Nolan trilogy, and you probably saw, like, the Batman and Robin with, like, Clooney. Did you see that with Schwarzenegger uh, as Yeah, I mean, freeze? yeah, I, I saw it on TV. I mean, what year did that come out? Because I feel like I was, like, God. under 10 years old. It's like, 98. Yeah, that's, I was 10 years old. Yeah. And so then, and then Batman Forever was like ninety six, I think. Yeah, ninety five. So I, it's safe to say I haven't seen him. But you never saw eighty nine. Nope. You're too young. Oh and I never showed man. that to you. Nope. Awesome. You're in for a treat. I think. Sounds I mean, good. It, it kind of the fact that you saw the Nolan Batmans, you got to kind of push them out of the way. But not yeah, completely. I understand that. But not completely. But, not but completely. I mean, it's it's a different movie. It's a different kind of movie. Okay. So, I love both just the same, but for different reasons. Cool, I'm excited. Sounds good. Hey, George, uh, have you ever seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? I have now. Which one? Because there's a million of them, and they're all called <laughs> the same thing, and it's really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw the, I've seen the original. I'll say the original, yes. The, the only one worth seeing. Great job, George. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. <laughs> Very exciting. Uh, fixing you one movie at a time. Hey. Yes. Week by week. More cultured every week. Thank you all for joining us on the Remedial Film Class podcast. As always, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at, at Remedial Film Pod. You can also find us at Facebook.com slash Remedial Film Pod. And if you want to go old school, you can email us, Remedial Film Pod at gmail.com. We'll see you here soon.